Hi, my name is Mari Bui. I'm an attorney here at the Nieves Law Firm, and today I'm going to talk to you about orders that you can request in a restraining order and orders that can be granted. So I've talked about it in prior videos, but there's four different types of restraining orders. The most typical that we see are domestic violence restraining orders and civil harassment restraining orders. So what's going to happen is that because a domestic violence restraining order is in a family court and a civil harassment restraining order is in a civil court, they have different powers. Uh, obviously, domestic violence restraining order is going to have a little bit more power and oomph than a civil harassment restraining order. So we'll start with one that has lesser orders included. So in a civil harassment restraining order, you typically have to prove harassment um, and the parties are not as intimate to one another. They're normally um, more distantly related to one another, strangers, friends, cousins, things like that. So with civil harassment restraining orders, what you typically have is an order to no longer harass, what we call personal conduct um, orders, basically do not har harass molest, attack, strike, any of those things, any form of conduct that is harassing, you have to stop doing. You stop engaging um, in this personal conduct that is harassing. That's the biggest basis of the restraining order um, that you can get. The other thing is a stay away order, which means you have to stay a certain distance away from the home, workplace, school, uh, or other protected parties that are included. You can also include other places that you may frequent very often, say you own two homes, so both of the addresses. Um, that is one thing that you can include in there as well. It's incredib incredibly important to remember that with civil harassment restraining orders, they do not issue move out orders. So if you are a neighbor or a roommate, they're gonna include orders that are narrowly tailored that it doesn't effectually move someone out of the home. They cannot have orders to move anyone or evict someone from the home in civil harassment restraining orders. Um, and continuing with that, you will have an order that includes uh, turning in your firearms because you are not allowed to possess firearms if you're the subject of a restraining order. Along with that, you also have possession and control of animals. So that means you can include your animals in the restraining order and protect them as well. Lastly, you typically get an order to allow you to record communications or any interactions that you have with the restrained party, which is incredibly helpful. And again, you can request attorney fees and court costs if you are the successful party and a judge can order that. Um, now that's not the only exclusive order that you can get in a restraining order. Those are typically what's included on the form, but you can request additional orders as well. Now with the domestic violence restraining order, you can request those same orders and also a lot more. In a domestic violence restraining order, the biggest difference is that you actually can request a move out order. Yes, you can evict someone from the home because typically you have partners and they're partners that live with one another. You're requesting that they move out of the home. Um, you also have orders for property restraint. That means someone cannot sell or get rid or damage any property. Um, you can request payment for debts that you guys have. Maybe you guys have bills or anything like that. Um, you can request payment for um, reimbursal for any damages caused by the abuse. Think of like holes in the wall, broken furniture, broken clothes, or, or um, you know, mess, clothes that were messed with or damaged. You can request that as well. And again, you get to request um, to record communications amongst them. And if you have kids, you can further request custody orders, visitation, child support. Um, you can request that the other party not take the children outside of the state or the country. Um, those are additional orders that are incredibly more broad. You can also request health insurance um, and things like that. So those are other things that you can request. Um, you can also request that they take place in therapy or battery intervention. Um, those are the typical orders. And again, you can still request additional orders. They just have to be tailored to the specific conduct that's involved. You know, if there's some weird thing that's very specific to your case that you want that party to stop doing, you can request that as well. The judge will ultimately decide. But you can be a little bit creative when it comes to that stuff. Um, so essentially, those are the orders that you can request in, in restraining orders. Again, it really depends on the type of restraining order that you are requesting, but in any event, the powers are incredibly broad, it's a very useful tool, and it's important to know what you can be subjected to if a restraining order is filed against you. If you find yourself the subject of a restraining order or if you need to have a restraining order filed on your behalf and you need an advocate to really represent your interests, please contact the Nevis Law Firm and see how we can help you. Thank you.